All right, well, we'll see. Still got some more to come. Please welcome, from the fashion team, Elna Baker. Uh, Tom Shalou, like your outfit, your speech was poorly prepared, boring, and there was nothing to look at during it. To all the fashion supporters here tonight, I can see you. I know who you are. You sparkle in the midst of this crowd like De Beer diamonds. Amidst these other human-shaped pieces of shit. Uh, tonight we are here to show you that fashion is not a menace. It's not a goon squad. It's not racist. It's aspirational and, dare I say, Inspirational. Our competitors tonight would like you to believe that they have some position of authority because they've been in a few films. <laughs> run, fat boy, run. Backwash. Spunk. The Tanya Harding story. Yogi Bear. And Snow 2. Brain freeze. <laughs> or no one was so good they needed a sequel <laughs> It was the sequel to Snow One. <laughs> well, that was just called Snow. <laughs> Michael Ian Black played Billy in a, in an episode of Sex in the City. The post-it always sticks twice. Not true. It was never in Sex in the City. <laughs> Way to do your homework, Michael. <laughs> that was actually Michael Showalter. He was so lazy he didn't even show up tonight. Team Comfort. Trust me when I say that this is the closest, these films are the closest these men will ever get to true fashion. Take Tom Cavanaugh. Well aware that 200 plus people would be forced to look at him tonight if he selected that lumpy blue sweatshirt. Because he's trying to tell the world that he doesn't take himself too seriously. Well, what he doesn't know is that sweatshirt is not just blue, it's not turquoise, it's not lapis, it's cerulean. And he's also blithely unaware of the fact that in 2010, Oscar de la Renta did a collection of cerulean gowns. And then it trickled and filtered down to the department stores, and then it trickled on into some tragic casual corner where he, no doubt, fished it out of some clearance bin. <laughs> However, that blue represents millions of dollars in countless jobs, and it's sort of comical how he thinks that he's made a choice that exempts him from the fashion industry when in fact he's wearing a sweatshirt that was selected for him by the people in fashion. <laughs> Take my word for it. I'm a very well-connected person. And so I enlisted the help of my dear friend, Joan Juliet Buck, the former editor-in-chief of French Vogue. And Joan kindly looked at some images of these three men easily available on Google Image. And Joan is here now to share her thoughts on their wardrobes. Their coded messages. <laughs> She speaks in fashion. <laughs> anyway, it's comfortable. The first person was uh, Michael Showalter, but we switched it up with a picture of Tom Shalhoub. <laughs> and then this one. For okay. translating that code. It's being translated. And a girl fashion! If you're bored by this, oh here we are. <laughs> Number one, a sweatshirt. A shirt too sweaty. <laughs> a 
said, maybe I say also, and he looks like he was attacked by his chihuahua. His chihuahua attack. It's more interesting if he said Doberman that attacks. No? Thank you. The second one, yes, the uh, vertical stripe, always very attractive. And you look like Jean Dujardin at the beginning of OSS 117, uh, Celui Ario. The music is fantastic, it's uh, gentle on my mind. This man in this outfit, uh, trainer outfit, uh, but he's out, of, uh, he's out of training. His style is really disgusting, he looks like he just got fired by an oligarch. Black. <laughs> and uh, Jean Bersri, Jean Bersri is an entire social history of your country because I'm sure at the beginning there was a problem with the potatoes or the corn. <laughs> of the peasants in the fields. So what you needed to do was to put a piece of denim to protect the heart and the chest of the men working in the field. And this became the overall. And it is man of the people. It is very, it is very communist. Uh, but what you say is I'm man of the people, but I cannot uh, go pee pee in the street because I have to pay to go pee pee. So uh, I got beat by a chihuahua, I got fired by uh, an oligarch, and I have to pay someone to go pipi. Chapeau, hein, huh, les mecs? C'est nu. The former editor of French Vogue speaks. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in a time where more and more people are falling into the depths of Byling's basement, their better selves being slaughtered and left somewhere in a men's warehouse, it is important to stand up, to believe in fashion, because fashion can change your life. How do I know this? I was once comfortable. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's me. That's me and my pet pig. <laughs> He's a purse now. <laughs> how did I change? How did I learn how to be fashionable? Well, somewhere in the pages of Vogue, Grace Coddington taught me how to believe in beauty. And she told me that if I changed everything about myself, the fashion world would truly accept me. Next slide, please. And it did. And it afforded me the opportunity to be sexually objectified. Just like God intended when he pulled a rib out of Adam and fashioned it into a willowy bird creature called a woman. Fashion changed my personal history. Which brings me to my final point. What would have happened if important people throughout history had taken fashion into account? Sure, Gandhi was thin. But what if he bothered to put on Armani? Where would India be today? Would people in India not just be wearing silly scarves? <laughs> or there's Mother Teresa. Talk about a bad fashion habit. <laughs> and what of the ultimate martyr, Jesus? The Jews were in the garbage business. They were textile people. But Jesus came to them basically wearing sackcloth. I mean, the lamb is like a cute accessory, but come on, Jesus, what were you thinking? <laughs> Imagine what would have happened if Jesus had actually put on a suit. Next slide. <laughs> Who would dare to crucify someone in a suit? Next slide. It would totally break up the line of the suit. In conclusion, fashion matters. Had Jesus paid more attention to fashion, he wouldn't have died. If you pay attention to fashion, you'll live forever. Thank you. <laughs>